Hey everybody, this is example number three in the steel design for flexural beam members. The problem statement we have is a W16 by 57 shape of A992 steel is 32 feet long and supports a reinforced concrete floor slab. The service dead load is 500 pounds per feet and, and the, in which the weight of this beam is not included and the service live load is 600 pounds per feet and we're asked to check if this beam is adequate per LRFD and ASD so this is an analysis problem so we're given a shape and we have to check if it's good enough so here's our figure uh, it's just a simply supported beam with a dead load and live load superimposed on it 32 feet long so one thing we should know before moving on is that the reinforced concrete floor slab it provides a continuous lateral support of the compression flange on the beam so if you have strong axis bending in this beam, it's going to bend about the, about the major axis, the x-axis. So we're going to have compression on the top half of the beam and, and um, tension on the bottom half of the beam. So the parts that's in compression, that can be subject to lateral torsional buckling. So we, so we have to check, um, since, we, since we have a reinforced concrete floor slab, it provides continuous lateral support of this compression flange so we don't have to worry about the lateral torsional buckling. So that now the first step will be to check for compactness for this section and we're going to check the compactness for both the flange and the web. So the dimension, the parameter for uh, flange compactness is a parameter that's the width of the flange divided by two times the thickness of the flange and that's in the beginning parts of the manual and the tables where it has all the section properties and they list that for you for each shape. So in this case it's 4.98 for our, for our shape W16 by 57. And then we compare this value this 4.98 to the upper limit to the upper limit for compact category and this is 0 0.38 times the square root of E over FY and this can be found in table B4.1 B, table B4.1 in the AISC manual has a limiting width thickness ratios for compression elements. So uh, for our case, it's the first case, the flexure in flanges of rolled I-shaped sections and channels. So we just plug in the numbers, 0 0.38 times the square root of 29,000 KSI divided by 50 KSI. And we see that this upper limit is 9.15. And so the, the 4.98 value is less than 9.15. So that means this shape is compact. Uh, this flange is a compact flange. So once we check the flange, now we move on to the web. And for the web, the parameter you're looking for is the H over TW, um, which is the height of the flange divided by the thickness of the height of the, of the web divided by the thickness of the web. And this is also given in the beginning section properties of each shape. And for our case, it's 33. And then we compare this value to the upper limit, uh, upper compact limit uh, for a web. It's going to be 3.76 times the square root of E over Fy. And in table, in table B4.1, this is, um, let's see, this is case number nine. It's flexure and webs of W symmetric I-shaped sections and channels, H over TW. So we plug in the numbers, 3.78 times the square root of E over Fy, 29,000 divided by 50 KSI, and that's 90.55. So 33 is less than 90.55, so that means that we have a compact web. So since our, comp since our flange is compact and our web is compact, that means our whole section is compact. Uh, total section is compact is compact. So once we've identified that, now we have to calculate the nominal flexural strength. So since the shape is compact and the and it's laterally supported, the nominal flexural strength will be equal to the plastic moment, the uh, moment. So that will be equal to the yield strength multiplied by the plastic modulus. And the yield strength for A992 steel is 50 KSI. And then the plastic modulus, you can get that from the, from the table in the beginning, in the section properties table in the AIC manual. And that's 105 inch cubed. So the plastic moment 
the nominal flexural strength is 52 50 inch kips which is 437.5 foot kips so that's our nominal strength now we need to calculate the load that's being applied so we know that there's a dead load but we are also told that the weight of the weight of the section the weight of the beam is not included in the dead load so we need to add that in our dead load so the dead load is 500 pounds per 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 feet plus the 57 pounds per feet due to the weight of the beam weight of beam so that gives us 557 pounds per pounds per foot and then we divide that by a thousand so that's 0 0.557 kips per uh, kips per foot so we have our dead load and so since this is a simply supported beam uh, with a distributed load the maximum moment will be equal to, will occur in the middle and that will be equal to w times l squared divided by eight that's just a standard formula for this type of beam with a distributed load simply supported beam with distributed uh, load so we plug in the numbers so our w so first we're going to calculate the maximum moment due to the dead load and then the maximum moment due to the live load so the maximum moment due to the dead load is going to be 0 0.557 kips per foot times um, times the length length squared which is 32 feet squared divided by 8 and that gives us 71.3 foot kips and then we do the similar thing for calculating the moment maximum moment due to the live load and that's equal to 0 0.6 kips per foot since our live load was 600 pounds per foot so that's 0 0.6 kips per foot times the length squared is 32 squared divided by 8 that's 76.8 uh, foot kips so now we have our uh, applied load and now we can take a look into the LRFD solution first so we need to calculate the 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 um the design load the required strength we need to calculate that and that's going to be based on a load combination a from ASCE7 ASCE7 LRFD load combination i believe it's uh, load combination 2 load combination 2 and that's equal to 1.2 times dead load plus 1.6 times live load so that just means we just take the the moment due to the dead load multiply that by 1.2 plus the live uh, plus the moment due to the live load multiply that by 1.6 so 1.2 times 71.3 plus 1.6 times 76.8 and we get 208.44 kips foot and then we have to calculate the design strength per LRFD and the resistance factor is going to be 0 0.9 times a nominal flexural strength so it's 0 0.9 times the nominal flexural strength which is equal to the plastic moment that we calculated FY times ZX that's 437.5 kips foot so that gives us a design strength of 393.75 foot kips and this is greater than the required strength of 208.44 kips foot so that means uh, this shape is okay it's good so with LRFD done we can move on to ASD and for ASD we have to calculate the load again uh, we have to look at a different load combination for ASD it's a different load combination but it's also located in ASCE7 ASCE7 and for ASD it's going to be dead load plus live load so we're going to add the moment due to the dead load plus the moment due to the live load and that's 71.3 kips foot plus 76.8 kips foot that equals 148.1 uh, kips foot and now we have the uh, now we have to calculate the allowable moment the allowable strength or allowable moment whichever way you want to talk about it and that's going to be equal to 0 0.6 times a nominal flexural strength nominal moment and that's 0 0.6 times 437.5 kips foot and that gives us 262.5 kips foot and that's greater than the the, the load the factored load which which is 148.1 kips foot so that means this is uh, good for ASD so also I created a spreadsheet uh, for this same problem so everything in yellow is inputs we have our shape W16 by and then this is the weight per uh, per uh, per foot and then the beam length yield strength Young's modulus dead load live load uh, BF over 2 times TF 
and H over TW and the plastic modulus. So all these represent uh, inputs. And then everything else is output. So this is the weight of the beam per foot. And then we check the flange uh, compactness and we check the web compactness. So I'll post, this web, uh, I'll post this spreadsheet on the website and you guys can take a look and go through it and see each and everything, all the parameters and maybe play around with the numbers. But um, this, is, this spreadsheet is more like a starting point. It's not gonna be applicable to every single problem. This is just applicable to this uh, example, but you can modify it and uh, for your own purposes, whatever you need to do. So we check the compactness and then we calculate the nominal flexural strength convert into foot kips and then we calculate the total dead load which is the dead load plus the beam the beam weight per foot and then we calculate the maximum moment due to the dead load the WL squared over 8 and then the moment due to the live load again WL squared over 8 and then here's the LRFD solution we calculate the ultimate uh, strength uh, the required load which is 208.44 uh, which is equal to 1.2 times MD plus 1.6 times ML. And then we calculate the design strength, which is 0 0.9 times the nominal strength, and check if, it, if this shape passes or not. And then again, we do the same thing for ASD, calculate the factored load, and then calculate the allowable moment, allowable strength, and then compare the two and check if it passes or not. So this is the end of example number three for steel design for flexural beam members. Please uh, subscribe to the channel and visit our website at engineeringexamples.net and you can check out this um, spreadsheet. I've, I'll post it over there and I'll try to post it also on the Facebook page. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash engineeringexamples. Thanks.